Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Praise the, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. And so, Father, we're thankful, hallelujah, for your presence. We are thankful for your mercy that endures forever. We are thankful, hallelujah, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and that the righteous run into it and we are safe. And so, Father, today we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name. Father, you said that where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of us. And, Father, that it's not about a church building, but, Father God, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price. And so, Father, I thank you, hallelujah, that, Lord, that there's a grace and anointing we need in this hour, Father God. It's a new moment in history. And so, Father, I just now release blessings upon the people in the name of Jesus. Uh, we're asking you in the name of Jesus that there will be a grace and an anointing that is released to your people to live and move and have their being in you now in this new season, Father. I decree and declare this over us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, bless God. <coughs> Pastor Bertha um, wanted me to um, teach a word that I released, I think it was last year around the new year, uh, on the emergent layer. Um, those of you that are familiar with the rainforest, um, there are four stra stratas or layers in a rainforest. Um, the emergent layer is the one that actually is above the canopy. Uh, when I started studying this, I didn't know about the emergent layer. All I knew was that there was a canopy, uh, which is uh, some, some websites say that there's three, that the canopy is a top layer, and then there's um, the, the understory, which is like the middle layer, and then the bottom layer is called the fourth floor. But then they say that there is a fourth layer, which is the emergent layer. Um, the, emergent, the word emergent, well, let me say the emergent layer are those trees that grow above the canopy. Um, the, the word emergent in the dictionary means in the process of coming into being or becoming prominent. And so in this time, in this moment, um, the word says out of Isaiah 60 verse 30, or I'm sorry, 60, Isaiah 60 verse 1 through 3, to arise and shine, for our light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. For behold, darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon us, and his glory will appear upon us. Nations will come to our light, and kings to the brightness of our rising. In Matthew 5, And AJ's not here, but we're going to walk the word today. <laughs> Matthew 5, starting at verse 13, says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all that are in the house. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So in this time, in this new season, in this new era uh, that, that has now beginning to define our world um, with group size limiting and all that, it's time for us as the king, as kingdom people to arise and shine for our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. And I am thankful to be a part of a kingdom house here at Freedom Outpost Ministries. I know I was tasked earlier this week to call and find out. We just wanted to, to find out about the group size limiting and all that. So I made some calls on Friday. Um, 
three or four calls later, I'm talking to uh, the Lincoln County emergency manager. I told him who I was and where I was from. And the first words out of his mouth was, I know who you are. And he thanked us for our participation in being a warming center and for bringing the homeless people into, the, into that warming center. He said that they were very grateful for us. So I say that to say that this house is one that is doing that mandate, that we are being a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid, that we are one that we've decided, we've made the choice to arise and shine for a light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. And yes, gross darkness, very deep darkness covers the earth. But the Bible says in Romans where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. So know, hallelujah, that God has equipped us with all things that pertain unto life and godliness in the name of Jesus. So, um, the emergent layer, which is the tallest layer of the rainforest. I, I, um, and again, I, I think of a book, and it's probably been 30 years ago, by uh, Dr. Cho, is that his name, out of about called The Fourth Dimension. And we are called to walk in that dimension. It's been 30 years since I've read it, but it's, a, it's the faith dimension that, that Isaiah 11 talks about how the spirit of the Lord rests upon us, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and that we do not judge by what our eyes see or make a decision by what our ears hear. Hallelujah. So we're walking. The, the Bible says the just shall live by faith hallelujah that we walk by faith and not by sight and so father I thank you that you are bringing us into that emergent layer in the name of Jesus some of these trees uh, in the emergent layer um, they reach heights of anywhere from 150 to 230 feet tall the sunlight and there's there's lots of rain up there uh, those conditions are very harsh. Um, the sunlight and plentiful rain helps them grow, the, uh, which speaks of the son of righteousness, that, that the Bible says those that fear his name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings and will go forth and grow up as calves that's been released from the stall. The word talks about the washing of the water by the word that let my doctrine drop as a rain out of Deuteronomy 32 uh, as, a, as a, the, 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 the dew upon the earth. And so um, God wants us to grow up. That, that uh, the purpose of the fivefold ministry in, in Ephesians 4 is so uh, that the saints can be perfected, that the saints can grow up into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Most of the trees in, these, in this uh, emergent layer are evergreen. It means they don't lose their leaves all at once. And that enables them to use the year-round sunshine to make their own food and that they thrive here as a result. Evergreen. You ever hear the story of, of the fig tree where Jesus came and he was hungry and he went over to the fig tree and it was in bloom and, and, and yet it wasn't the season, but yet he came looking for fruit on that tree. And so evergreen in season and out of season we're supposed to be ready to always give an answer to those who ask about the hope that's within us there's strong winds up there in that in that emergent layer and those strong winds will help the seeds disperse from the tallest trees to other parts of the forest Jesus said, or think it not strange, in the, in the Bible it says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which come upon you. So there will be um, testings, there will be things that we as believers go through. But we can choose to thrive in that because in, in that uh, strong winds, seeds are being released. I know I think it's the sequoia or the redwood tree that the only way their seeds get dispersed is through fire. So they, and now that'll preach right there. <laughs> the, um, 
the layer, of course, the, the emergent layer gets more sun than any other layers in the rainforest, which again, that speaks of the sun of righteousness, that, that hallelujah, we, we, hallelujah, it's the word says, in him we live and move and have our being. It's in him that we live. It's in him that we move. It's in him that we have our being. We need the sun. I, again, it's the, again, the sequoias or the redwoods. I think it's the redwoods. They, they only uh, grow in this country, like uh, for sure right around the coast in, in California. But they, and, and, and the fog comes in in the morning, and they need that fog. It helps them to, to, to thrive and survive. And the fog is, is symbolic of the glory of God. And we need the glory of God. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, <laughs> by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so we need his presence. As a deer pants after the water brooks, it says in Psalms 42, let me turn over there. Psalms 42 says, As a deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Psalm 63, uh, 1 says that... Uh, let me just turn over there. O God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Thus I have seen you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied as with moral and fatness, and my mouth offers praise with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Yeah, those who seek my life to destroy it, they will go into the depths of the earth. They will be delivered over to the power of the sword, and they'll be a prey for foxes. But we will rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him will glory. But for the mouths of those who speak lies will be stopped. So we need the presence of God as a deer. Let, let, he said, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for we, shall be, for we will be filled. So we need a hunger and a thirsting after righteousness. And um, so, hallelujah. The, the, the emergent layer gets more sun than any other layers in the rainforest. It's the brightest layer because it gets the most sunlight and at this layer you can see condensation forming into the clouds <laughs> how great is that the author and the finisher of our faith that that he said in the psalms that he made known his, his acts to Israel, but he made known his ways to Moses to be right there face to face with God, not seeing what his hand is doing, not being enamored by all the works of God, but to go into the very presence of God, hallelujah, and to know what makes him tick to see the condensation forming into clouds at the very beginning. That's that the secret place of the Most High. And that, that I just thought, wow, that's awesome that up there in that, there's no, you're up there above everything else. There's very few trees that make it to this layer. You know, you can Google it and see, and it'll show you, but there's very few trees that ever make it to the emergent layer. And so there's very few people that really are sold out for God. You know, I think it was last week, or and it may have been uh, you, Pastor, but uh, they, uh, they, we, we, the, whoever it was, we were talking about uh, people in other countries that they give their lives to Jesus. But here in America, 
we are asking, we accept Jesus into our hearts. We accept him. It's like we add Jesus to our lives. I got Jesus. I got Jesus. He's in my heart. I got Jesus. Yeah, I got Jesus. You know, he's in my pocket. I got, I got my Bible. I got my cross on. I got Jesus. I have added him to our life. And yet in other countries, they will give their life to Jesus Christ. There's a big difference. There is a big difference. Colossians. Let me find it. Colossians chapter 3. Starting with verse 1. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things on the earth. For you have died and your life is hid with Christ in God. Here it is. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Christ is our life. We, we say this scripture, and, and uh, sometimes I think we do it rather flippantly, but I've been crucified with Christ. It is, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who lived, who, 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 who died for me. But, but have we really? You know, the Bible talks about a bondservant. A bondservant was one that, that they served their master for a certain period of time, and then there came a moment when they could be released. They could become a free person. But there were a few reasons why that if they decided, I don't want to be a free person. I want to stay with my master. I love my master. Maybe I've got a family. But for whatever reason, they chose to stay a slave or a bond servant and what they did then was they pierced their ear they took them to a door and put and put an awe through them and they pierced their ear and these people willingly laid their life down to serve others because of love and that's what that's what God's calling us he's not calling us to accept him and add him to our lives okay in this hour adding Christ to our life is not going to get us through okay we cannot walk in fear yeah the, you know what I don't even want to say it but I will say the word coronavirus but let me tell you it's a name that has to bow its knee to the name of Jesus because I just read it number one Christ is seated at the right hand of God and Ephesians says that he is far above all principality and power and might and dominion hallelujah that there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we can call upon to be saved that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, will be healed, will be delivered, will be set free. Hallelujah. But we, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's this treasure in an earthen vessel. So it doesn't matter uh, what, what the, the title is. The Bible says no plague will come near us. No plague will come near our dwelling place. So in this hour, hallelujah, when there's, 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 the, uh, there's the opportunity to fear, there is the opportunity to, to fix our eyes not on Jesus, but on the situations and the circumstances. As earlier, Isaiah 11 that says that there's the, the, in this time and this moment, there is plenty of opportunity to judge by what our eyes see and to make a decision by what our ears hear. But what does the word say? that we do not judge by what our eyes see and we are not supposed to judge by what our ears hear. What, the facts may be, the facts may be, but what does truth say? Yes. What does truth and facts are not always the same. Facts are subject to change. Truth, who is a person, who is the word of God, will never change. He said, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. That Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that he has magnified his word above his name. So the word, what does the word say? 
What does the word say? The word I've heard it said says 365 times, fear not. God says, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind and self-discipline. So, hallelujah. The word, the word is what's going to get us through these days. Hallelujah. The word, it's back to the Bible. Hallelujah. The, there's, the, as, 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 as Larry said earlier, Selah, that moment pause and calmly think about what's been said pause I we I said it last last week Isaiah or Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength the end of it verse 10 I believe be still and know that I am God cease striving and know that I am God God says I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me hallelujah so eh. Yeah, those are really off my notes. Glory to God. Amen. Have your way, O oh God. Hallelujah. So, going back to the Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, the, again, going back to the emergent layer. The trees here, have, they experience different weather conditions, including very hot weather, strong winds, and bad rainstorms. Um, and I just pulled information from various websites, so some of this might be repeating itself. But the emergent layer, very few reach that level. You're up here where all eyes can see you. You know, you can, uh, God's not called us to blend in, okay? God's called us to arise and shine for a light has come. There are, um, it's very sunny up there. Only the strongest and tallest trees will ever reach this layer. There are many birds, uh, butterflies, bats, and small monkeys that live in this layer. But I want to say some animals never venture as high as the emergent layer because it's very dangerous due to the unsteady branches and the massive drop to the forest floor. Now, the Bible says what that speaks to me out of Hebrews 12 and verse 1. It says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with patience the race that's set before us. So, the, so it's the, the, the animals, the birds, all those things that live in the emergent layer, they're light. They can't be heavy. And that's why it says some animals never venture here because it's so dangerous because the the there's unsteady branches and and there's a lot of wind and and it's so far up so you got to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets us we've got to um first peter 5 7 cast all our care upon the lord for he cares for us matthew 11 28 starting with verse 28 <clears throat> Jesus said come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle haha <laughs> and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we got to lay aside some weights and sins, some encumbrances. We got to take up our cross daily and follow him. We got to crucify our flesh and follow him so that that it really is Christ in me, the hope of glory. It really is his treasure in an earthen vessel. That I'm all sold out for the Lord. Hallelujah. In this layer, there's various birds. There's like 
uh, toucans and sparrow hawks, butterflies, moths, and monkeys. And they stay, the animals find shelter in this layer to stay away from their enemies. Now, what does Psalm 91 say? That he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For it is he who delivers me, he delivers us from the snare of the fowler, from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover us with his feathers and under his wings we seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. We will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh us. Only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. For we have made the Lord our refuge, even the most high, our dwelling place. No evil will befall us. There will no plague come nigh our dwelling place. For he gives his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. They bear us up in their hands, lest we dash our foot against a stone. Hallelujah. We will tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon, the cobra, will trample, hallelujah, underfoot. And the Lord says, because you have loved me, therefore I will deliver you. I will set you securely on high. I will set you securely on high. Where you can live and move and have your being in me up in that emergent level. Because we've known his name. He says that we'll call upon him and he will answer us. He'll be with us in trouble. He'll rescue us and honor us with long life. He will satisfy us and let us see his salvation. Hallelujah. One of the things about a toucan, which y'all know they have the huge beak, and uh, it's a bright like yellow, blue, black, red, and orange. Uh, they're very active. But one of the things they have is the ability to do thermal regulation, which basically means that they have the, their, the ability through that beak somehow or other to keep their body temperature within certain boundaries, even when the surrounding temperature is very different. And then there's something called thermal conforming. A thermal conforming organism is contrasted in that it simply adapts the surrounding temperature to its own body temperature, thus avoiding the need for internal thermal regulation. So to me, that speaks again of Hebrews 12 that says, uh, lay aside no it's, a, no, it's Romans. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds because the, they have the ability to self-regulate. It doesn't matter what the temperature is on the outside. It doesn't matter what the circumstances are. If the media is proclaiming fear and destruction and death and doom and gloom, if it's cold outside or if it's up in the emergent layer where there's harsh winds, plenty of rain, and very hot sun, shine these birds have the ability to regulate their body temperature they can have the ability as Isaiah 26 says you Lord will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because I've trusted in you that the peace of God that passes all understanding garrisons and mounts guard over our hearts and minds so we got to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus we're the ones that, set, that should set the tone. We're the ones that in the midst of chaos and confusion. Isaiah, what does Isaiah 60 say? Going back there, Isaiah 60. Arise and shine, for our light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. For behold, gross darkness will cover the earth, deep darkness the people's. But the Lord will rise upon us and his glory will appear upon us. Nations will come to our light and kings to the brightness of our rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see they all gather together. They come to us. Sons will come from afar. Daughters will be carried in the arms. Then you will see and be radiant and our heart will thrill and rejoice. People are looking. There is, they are looking for answers. 
The media doesn't have it. They're looking for answers. God's placed us here in this moment. Acts says that he determined the time set for us, the exact boundaries of our habitation. And he did this in order that we would reach out and find him, though he's not far from each one of us. For in him, we live and move and have our being. So we're the ones that need to have answers. What is is it? First Peter? Um, let me find it. Sorry, I'm scribbling notes everywhere. Uh, I think it's First Peter that talks about always being ready to give an answer to those that ask about the hope that's within you. People in these days are going to be coming there. And if we can keep our mind fixed in, on him and walk in perfect peace, they're going to come up and they're going to say, what's different about you? Why are you not moved by the situations and the circumstances that's going on? And we can say, because God is our refuge and strength. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and we are safe. So God give us the ability to thermoregulate ourselves in the name of Jesus. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind and self-discipline. One of the other things that creatures that live in the, the emergent layer are called howler monkeys. And they eat fruit, and their howls are very loud. They said that the males, that when they howl, they can be heard up to three miles away. They release this sound to let other monkeys know this territory is occupied. <laughs> and so the Bible says in Psalm 47, Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. The ram's horn, the shofar, we're releasing a sound. This land, this land, this territory is taken. This territory is occupied by a troop. And by our God, we can run through a troop. And by our God, we can leap over a wall. One of the other things uh, about howler monkeys says that physical fighting among them is infrequent and generally of short duration. So doesn't Ephesians say, put aside all anger and bitterness, clamor, evil speaking, be at peace with one another, that we're all part of the body of Christ. It says in Ephesians 4, let no unwholesome word proceed from our mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will great, give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom we were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and clamor and anger and evil speaking be put away from us along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other just as God in Christ also has forgiven us. One of the other uh, creatures that lives in this emergent layer is a harpy eagle. The harpy eagle is the largest and most powerful bird of prey in all of the Amazon rainforest. They perch high up in the forest looking for food in the branches. And then when it spots its prey, it swoops down and grabs it with its, its huge tal talons, which are the largest of any living eagle. They have the ability, uh, it says that they've been recorded as lifting prey that's equal to their body weight. Some of the birds, they said, can swoop in and, and snag like a sloth or something off the, off the tree limb, and without even a break, then they, they just fly on off carrying that thing. Now, God's called us to be warriors. He's given us not a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. We, hallelujah, the Bible says, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Joel talks about how the, the army in Ephesians were a body that's fitly joined together. That we should, uh, a psalm says, he teaches our hands to war and our fingers to fight. Psalm 149 talks about how we sing to the Lord a new song. 
hallelujah, that God's given uh, a sharp two-edged sword. That we execute vengeance upon the nations and punishments upon the people. He says in Ephesians 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. These harpy eagles, they sit in the trees and they wait and they wait and they wait. Reminds me of an intercessor, a watchman on the wall. Habakkuk said, you know, Set, I set myself. Let me find that in Habakkuk 3. Somebody might find it before I do. I think it's, it's chapter 2. I will, st- uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. I will stand on my guard post and station myself on my rampart, and I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, inscribe it on tablets, that the one who reads it may run with it. So, We set ourselves, we wait on the Lord. We set ourselves there. We station ourselves. God's called us. Hallelujah. We keep watch to see what he'll say to us. And in prayer and intercession, hallelujah. And that's what we've been doing for these teams, hallelujah. 24-7 prayer. We're setting ourselves on on our watch, on our station, on our rampart. And we're watching to see what he will say. And when we see, hallelujah, the prey, then we're going to, we're going to swoop in. And by him we can run through a troop and by our God we can leap over a wall. When the door begins to or seems to close and the team, hallelujah, had to go find another way home, intercessors begin to pray, hallelujah, we set ourselves and we listened and we watched to see what God is saying. And God released a word. He released a vision that the door was open. It was part way open two different times. The door was not, it was closing, but it was still open. And a way was made because the Lord is the way. Hallelujah. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. One of the other things about the harpy eagle is that they are mostly silent away from the nest, which I thought was kind of cool. So I've read the scripture in Ephesians 4 about, you know, uh, let no unwholesome speech come out of your mouth. So when, when we're out there, when we've got, it means no mumbling, no murmuring, no complaining, we go about the king's business. That when we're away from the nest, when we're away from uh, out, no 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 we got to watch what we say this is the year of the mouth uh in the hebraic year the words of our mouth are very important the bible says y'all know it proverbs death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that 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 eat it those that speak the words you'll eat you're going to eat it what we reap is what we sow what we sow is what we will reap so speak life One of the other things up there are their butterflies, and, and this one particular type are called morpho butterflies, uh, M-O-R-P-H-O. They are so big, and they have like these blue shimmering wings that aircraft, airplane operators, the pilots, that as they fly by, they can see these wings in the, oh, as they fly over. Because they're, what is the word, iridescent? They catch the light, and, and, they're, and they're blue. But underneath, on the underside, they have um, the underside. They call it, they're decorated with eye spots. So which uh, they're like just a spot on the body that resembles an eye. And so what it does is it deceives potential predators 
that you know they could be looking at another another animal or something that um, it, it would draw their attention away from a vulnerable body part so see our lives are hid with Christ in God you know we dwell in the secret place of the most high it's Christ in us so to me and blue of course speaks of of the heavenlies and so to me I just thought wow Lord you know these butterflies may they're big and beautiful but yet a bride what is it a bride in combat boots you know, we may look all nice and, and, you know, with the blue shimmering wings, but underneath, you know, I'm dressed for war. I'm dressed for battle. I may be in my white garment, but I got my, my, uh, my, uh, my army boots on because I'm a bride, but yet I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a warrior. I'm a bride in combat boots. One of the other things found up there in the emergent la layer are scarlet macaws. And scarlet macaws is, uh, you know, very, they have very brilliant colors. They have, uh, they make loud calls. It makes, makes it one of the world's most striking of all the tropical birds. But one of the things about that, is this is that they have excellent vision and they have powerful beaks which help them to eat unripened fruit and to serve as an extra grip when climbing. They also have a high capacity for learning. And it says uh, that the young McCalls sometimes spend up to a year with their parents learning how to navigate the forest and handle tough foods. Now Hebrews, in, in, uh, I wanna pull out Hebrews 5 and verse 14 says, solid food is for the mature who because of practice have their senses trained to discern good and evil. In 1 Timothy 3, it talks about overseers and deacons. And in verse 6, it says that an overseer or a deacon or someone in a position of authority should not be a new convert so that he will not become, become conceited and fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. And then James 3, in verse 1, says, let not, let not many of you become teachers, my brothers, knowing that as such we will incur a stricter judgment. Jesus said to go into all the world and make disciples. Many times we, we, we get a harvest, we bring new, new babes into the kingdom, but we leave them on their own. This is a season when I believe the harvest is ripe and we need to bring these people in, but we've got to train them. We've got to train up children in the way that they should go so that when they're old, they'll not depart from it. We need to train them in, in, in hallelujah, in the, in the things of the kingdom. You know, that's why I'll put a plug in for the nine o'clock class. We've got a foundations class. We gotta learn that. We got, we got a school of the Bible at 10 o'clock. We've got, we got opportunities. There's stuff out on YouTube that, that we can go. We have opportunities to learn, but we've got, we, we can't just begin to place these new children or these new babes out there, but they've got to spend time. We've got to be willing to, to train up these people in the way that they should go so that they'll learn how to navigate. You know, we're not called to be like any other church. We're not called. We're kingdom-minded. We're called Hallelujah to Korianda to, to, to we've got a mandate. We deal with the enemy. And so we got to train. God teaches our hands to war. So we got to teach these new people. We got to teach them how to train. How to train them up. Train them up for war in the name of Jesus. So that's just a few of the things. But know that God's calling us to a higher place. And he's called us, but yeah, his grace is sufficient for us. So, Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord, that whom you've called, you've equipped. And so, Lord, we bless you and thank you today, Father, that you are working us both the will and to do of your good pleasure. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.
bless the Lord. We just thank Vicki. That was the elder Vicki. That was rich, uh, very rich. And, uh, you know, when you come in, when you're tag teaming, then you uh, don't really know how the messages are going to tie together. But I see how God is, has done this. And so uh, I thank God for that. He even shifted some things today this morning, but, uh, you know, because I had that which I was going to release, didn't know how it was going to come across, but God is faithful. And I'm not going to keep you long, but I'm going to keep you as long as Holy Spirit says. Hallelujah. So, uh, Elder Vicki had mentioned that we are the salt of the earth, that we are the light of the world. Hallelujah. So as we are in those places, that's what we're called. She spoke of the emergent layer. He, she spoke of the layer that gets more sun than any other layer. Is in the presence of God or should be in the presence of God more than any other layer because you, you're, you're the light. You're the light when darkness is trying to overtake things. You're that which uh, it says... Uh, being prominent in times of darkness there's things that are prominent people are looking for things and if we are the light of the world and god has called us to be like the forerunners those who uh cannot be hidden should not be hidden therefore we need to know how to be that uh, i as god was showing me some of these things it's like people have a desire Many, many uh, children of God have a desire to be that light. But sometimes they look at themselves and they feel challenged. And I know as uh, in the season that we're in with the threats and what they're reading on the news and people uh, not being comfortable in the places that they are and, and seeing uh, fear in many, many people around them and even some of the people who profess Christ wavering in their faith, then it makes them uh, start to think, it, it, am I really going to be the light that I need to be in this challenging, in this, in this world that I live in? And so I believe God gave me some of what he gave me in order for us to be challenged and make that transition in whatever area we need to make it in to become the light, to become steadfast, to become unmovable, to become steady like the Lord had called us to be. Because he took me to Job. He took me to Job 40. He took me to what, uh, how God answered Job after Job had responded. So I'm going to go to Job uh, 40 and 7. Uh, the purpose of this challenge, and we're challenged all the time by the word of God. We're challenged by what, um, how Holy Spirit brings things to us through people that God has assigned in our lives. And even for myself, uh, I thank God for it. As many people know, I'm a person who I like to have things straightforward. But then I realized I also need to be active, taking action of what I have uh, acquired, of the, the understanding, the wisdom, uh, the new mindset. I need to do that. And, and it's amazing to me how God takes everything and he works it all for good. So for those who are out there who are hearing and knowing that they are in that emergent layer, that God has assigned them there, that they have, a, they have a followed the Lord and, and, and they're... they're um, the remnant, you know, sometimes people call them the remnant, you know, the forerunners. They, they are challenged. And the word today, I believe, is, is to challenge us to be that for real. You know, uh, I think uh, Elder Vicki mentioned some cliches that, you know, people say, you know, they use the word. But can they do that word? Is that word in them? Is it producing the strength that God intended for it to produce, to go through the things that we have to go through and be the people that we're supposed, supposed to be. And she mentioned also, and uh, yes, it was a story about, I think it was China or Japan someplace. And it was just an article, but it was so impacting that we have, we accept Jesus. That was so good. 
And when I read that, it's like, that's what we do, except we add him to what we already have. We fit him into the places where we think he'll fit. Now, that's not across the board. Everybody doesn't do that, and, and I know you all understand that. But many do, because they get very surprised when they're challenged like we're getting challenged today in what's going on out there. And we should stay steady. We should be able to stay steady and um, we don't adjust, we don't become what's out there, but we are strengthened in who we are and, and we remain aligned with God. Again, God brought up the plumb line today and we'll get into that. But we give our life to the Lord, so therefore we're secure in him if we understand that now he is everything and we're all in with him. So in uh, Job 40, uh, the Lord began to talk to me about the word is designed to challenge you, challenge what's going on in you and what's not yet happening. So Job was being challenged, and I, I thought about how, how it humbled him, how it aligned him, how it called, uh, because it says the plumb line, which is truth, is the word of God, will create righteousness. It causes righteousness. So, um, as Job was being challenged by what God was saying to him, um, we need to allow, God, we need to accept that God does challenge us and not run away or try to self justify where we're at because we will be heading down the wrong road and lose that which God is trying to do in our lives. So, challenges are designed to alert you to the consequence perhaps of a prior decision, a wrong decision, a wrong action. Uh, challenges are designed to cause you to receive new knowledge, new understanding, to open you up, to cause you to open a door inside of you, to cause you to be willing to take a risk or step further into the, in faith. So it comes for a reason. Job was challenged in all these ways um, by the Lord, and in the end, then things got right. Now, his friends had some issue, and the word God speaks about that uh, in Job. The challenges are designed to make, cause you to make the appropriate exchange of information and causes you to align uh, which, that which causes you to be free and causes you to move forward in a right direction. And it will cause you to start to say right things and respond uh, in the right way. So it says in Job 40 and 7, it says, Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. This is God speaking. Uh, now God is God. And now when this comes across, you got to think, does, how does Job see God? How much does he know of God? And so when, when you read these things, it's like you can see where God is challenging uh, Job, not to destroy him, but to get him in right alignment so his mind is set right, so he'll know more about the God who's leading him and be yielded in obedience to that God and be uh, um, comforted by who he is. He says, would you condemn me that you may be justified? Now, this is God talking to Job. Have you an arm like God? Or can you thunder with a voice like his? Then adorn yourself with majesty and splendor and array yourself with glory and beauty. Can you disperse the rage of your wrath? Look upon everyone who is proud and humble him. Look upon everyone who is proud and bring him low. Can you tread down the wicked in their place, hide them in the dust together, bind them in faces in hidden darkness? He says, if so, then I will confess to you that you own, that your own right hand can save you. Now think about that in the midst of everything going on. People need to know that their God is who their God says that he is. And then they'll make the right decision and realign appropriately in this time and become that light. See, people are looking at those who are the light. And we don't want our light to be flickering. And we don't want our light to start to go dim at the challenges. 
because we are that light set up on the hill. That's one of the reasons that that message and the way that the Lord had brought it out um, was so um, moving and so um, caused people even at that time to understand that the, some of the hard things that you go through is allowing you to ascend to another place because only animals that are of a certain weight can can go there. So that says they had to lose some weights that were easily besetting them because as they went higher, then the limbs weren't as uh, heavy and strong, but they had a purpose. And so it's like when you're going on a, 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 a you're going somewhere and you start to get tired but you know that you have to reach that goal you see people get rid of some things because now that it becomes non-essential and your goal becomes essential this is what the lord is saying to those who are, are the remnant those that are called to be the light truly called and they're willing to be the light and so as they go higher they have to loose themselves from those things the things that used to matter won't matter anymore and when you lose yourself from that you're decreasing and God is increasing so therefore your light is getting brighter and therefore you have a, a, you're more uh, God can use you more you can go to those places and, and, and it's amazing when it's not a whole bunch of people because uh, as Vicki was ministering, it's, she said very few people, and we know that to be true, really get to this place. They really, you know, very few are willing. Now, few to God could be a, a, a huge, 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 huge number. But what it's saying here, not everybody is willing to do it. So you may be walking in your journey even today, and because, because this is real and God is real, you may be even walking along someone else. It could be a friend, it could be a family member, but remember, we are individuals, and our light will shine in and of itself because of what we do. So we cannot be turned to the left or to the right. We have to keep our eyes forward. And I was sharing with Larry today what at church where we had finished praying. The Lord gave me a revelation about my own personal self. And I had to recognize it was about walking and walking. Um, and sometimes in life, having your eye, even though your head's not turned, observing or looking at, out at the side of your eye. Uh, for a door or whatever to something that God is uh, that you believe God wants you to have but God said to me today he says I am the door so therefore it causes that little uh, uh, thing evidently that I was doing it shut that up because I was looking for the, a door I was falling I was looking for the door but God closed the door because he said he was the door so, you know, we have to be transparent if we're going to, if we're going to be an encouragement to other, and if we're going to, if iron is going to sharpen iron, we've got to be transparent. We're on this walk, but I know that I walk amongst people that are willing to give up everything. They gave their life to the Lord. They didn't know what that meant, and they're walking it out step by step by step. But each step, and when they run into a challenge, the word of God is so alive in them. And, and, and it's really because the word of God is God. God is so faithful, and he's so merciful, and he's so loving that he helps us not to step off to the right or to the left. He helps us get our feet steady on the right path, and doors will open for you. So we are the salt of the earth, and we are the light of the world, and we have... We have had to, not because we're any better than anyone else, but we have to be, uh, the, the definition that uh, was used of the emergent layer, we have to be prominent. We have to be where God wants us to be. He said we're not of this earth. We're not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. There's a purpose for that. And uh, God said, uh, um, that if we be lifted up, if he be lifted up from the earth, he will draw all men unto 
him. How do we, in this context today, lift him up from the earth? We get, rid of, we get rid of weights that have kept us from going up higher. The lighter we get in the flesh, the, uh, the more God shines through us. So we have to know that we're doing the right thing, even though the world and other people may feel like we're not, because God is the one that's leading us. Hallelujah. So we have to keep the, our eyes upon the Lord because he is truth. So I went through Job to challenge us. I went through Job uh, to let you know that when these words come across and when the Lord's explaining to Job who he is, that Job's faith, his understanding began to shift. So when we begin to understand who we're serving who created the world, who is authority, who is a supreme, who is sovereign, and we know him, and we know how he loves us, and then our faith arises, and that's what God is saying in this hour. Even his own children need to know who he is. So the more we know who he is, the more we can walk like his child. And then again, I, I think about how the Lord has just been putting this all together. Uh, this morning, when I was getting together, God said, let me define you. And so, you know, the Lord's talking, and it's like, okay, he said, you are, you are the, a daughter, you are the daughter of a king. So that gives you a definition, and he says, I am the king. Now, I wasn't asking God for anything, but I do know that God will give out what he needs to give out for what's ahead of you. So you won't misstep. I, 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 I know that we are something that God is going to use because he's designing us and he's causing us to become everything that he needs in this hour. And if we give our life to him, then he can use us according to how he desires. Now, don't you think it's interesting that last week, this week, uh, I had someone that said that the Lord was speaking that particular Psalms 46 uh, to them. This morning, yeah, this morning, uh, I had already had my, what I was going to speak on together, and God again brought Psalms 46. That's what Joe, uh, when, he met, when he gave the scripture last week, that's what he's talked about. So, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, Psalms 46. Um, if you know that Psalms 46 was written in the context of war, then you understand more about what's going on. And it says, and I'll go to that scripture and just read down through this. Like I said, I'm, I'm not going to re-preach. I will um, do it according to however Holy Spirit wants it done. But it says in Psalms uh, 46, God is our refuge. He's our shelter. He's our abode. You know, God is our help. He's letting us know. He's speaking and telling us. In, in Job, it was, Job was understanding who he was and who he was not about himself. Job was finding out, well, yeah, I, I, I am talking to a God, and he's explaining to me who he is, which has caused me to get in right position. And now I can get everything I, I, uh, that God wants me to have. And now I have a better understanding of what's going on. So we've got a lot of stuff going on in the world today. And, and the Lord is using this scripture and, and many others, of course, to get us in the place that we need to be. So if we know who God is and that he is sovereign and God is telling is saying he's our refuge he's our strength now this is written in a time of war like I said a very present a very now help in times of trouble he's there in times of trouble okay therefore we will not fear because the God God has no fear and we just talked about getting in right alignment with God, lights of the world, salt of the earth. 
So if we get in right position, then God can position us in the correct way, and then our light will shine, and then it will do what it needs to do for ourselves and for those around us and for the world that we uh, live in. And God is saying, be still. So this is speaking to the churches, to the individuals, to the nation, and even to the world. And God is saying, like, you know, when we start to think things out, God is saying, shh. He's trying to get our attention. He's saying things like, hush. He's trying to get our attention. Depending on how, if we know his voice, and if we are sold out or if we're all in, or even uh, if we know that this is for our good, even if we look around and we uh, look at our situation and know that we within ourselves can't make a difference, and we're going through all this turmoil in our mind and whatever, and you hear a voice say, Shh. But if you know the voice of God, he's saying, don't speak. You know, be still. It was said, it said this was written in a time of war. War, there's, there's high anxiety. You've got to be on alert. You've got an enemy out there to kill you. And yet, you have to be able to hear and walk in the right way. And God's saying, be still and know that I am God. So God was saying, because he's sovereign, the plumb line, and let's go to Isaiah 28 and 17 real quick. The plumb line, it says uh, in verse uh, 17, he said, I will, also, I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. Now, he said in, a, uh, in his scriptures, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things that we're looking for will be added to us. So he's telling us, do this and other things that you desire are going to come. And, he, and he's dealing with the timing of a thing. He's dealing with our thinking. He's dealing with our responses. He's dealing with our faith or lack of faith. He's dealing with uh, uh, the fact that when we walk out and we flip on the TV, and I'm like, Vicki, I don't want to give this coronavirus any uh, whatever, but it's just another thing that God has defeated and that we have authority over. We cannot be afraid of the pest. We cannot. So therefore, um, God keeps us aligned in those times. Because sometimes we do. You, you go out and it's like, okay, what's going on? You know, and you look to different people and they're in distress. And I mean, you're not looking to them to get anything from them, but you're seeing this. And, 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 and it's sad if you, if you know your word or read your word that these things are going to come. So we have to allow that spirit within us, that plumb line, to keep us no matter what. I love the, uh, what Vicki was saying about the different animals and those that uh, allow themselves to stay steady by adjusting themselves. They're, they're, you know, they're um, allowing the, the word to come in there, and uh, they know the time, they know the season that it is that they're in. And so a lot of people are looking at these things, and they're not alarmed because they know in, uh, in, in Revelations and, and Daniel, this is the season that we're in. And so I know they know what's going to happen. They know what God is doing. Uh, he, they know what uh, the, the enemy is doing. They know the end of the story. They have faith. It causes their faith to be active as they're walking through life in this world and 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 the source that they have and they live in is not of this world because we're of god so so there are those who um god said when he's telling them you know he's told them to be quiet and know that i am god and he he talked about uh he talked to me about the plumb line again so as we're challenged to come up out of this and to become everything that we need to be, we move further along into this scripture of um, 
in Psalms 46. So let's go back there again. Because it seems like that that's uh, being used rising up in people coming from the Lord I love it when God him you know God uh, uh, comes and says and does this or, or wakes you up and says that uh, thing or uh, to you do this thing don't do that thing because we we seek we we seek and we we read and we study and we have our senses are are touched by different things but the word says uh, you don't you don't make a decision according to what your eyes see uh, or what your ears hear. Because I'm telling you, in these last whatever, we've seen a lot and we've heard a lot. But God's word has stood. Hallelujah. And so we just c continue to proclaim it. We didn't really ask about the time. I didn't. I just was looking at the end, that it, you know, whenever. But it's God's will and God's way. But God is, is doing it. So let's go to Psalms 46, like I had said, and read a little further here. So the things that are like mountains to people. Hold on, let me... Uh, Oh, yes. Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountain, side, the mountain shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall be made glad, the city of God. Now, there is a river that flows from the throne of God. Let me get my scriptures here. Try not to be here all morning. But there is a, th there is a river. We know that uh, the river of life And so we know that it's the power of God. It all comes from, from God. Let's go to Revelation. I think it's Revelations 22 and 1. 22 and 1. And he showed me a river of water of life, being as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of of God and the Lamb. There's many, many scriptures that talk about God being the river. He calls himself a fountain. Uh, he talks about um, of being a fountain of living water in Jeremiah. So God is saying um, the city of God is going to be made glad in this time of war, remember this is being written in a time of war. It says the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. I think about the, the fact that when we receive God, God is in us. He's in the midst of us and we are in him. And so therefore we cannot be moved. So that tells me again that we need to know who God is. And we need to know who we are in God. We need to know the time and the seasons. And we need the scripture that's, we need to not forsake the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is as we see the day approaching. Now, we talked about, we're, we're going to try to be compliant, not, uh, we're not in fear. But it will never come to the point where we will not assembly to assemble together. Because we've been given a mandate 
uh, for a time of war, but God says, if you see the day approaching, we see the day approaching. We have to be an encouragement to one another. We have to give God worship. We have to draw from him everything that we need in, that, in this season. So therefore, there may very well come a time when we have to take a, a visible stand, but it's according to when God tells us to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's like God knows the time and the season of a thing. There's many battles out there that we could jump in and fight. But we don't fight every battle that comes along. There's many things that we could just, uh, like people say, well, are you going to take a stand on that? If God says so, if that's what he wants in this time, yes, absolutely. Because my obedience to God, our obedience to God, people, keeps you safe. You never want to step out of God's will. Even those who have been uh, martyred, I think about Stephen. He could have shifted some things to save his life, but he was already alive. They couldn't take his life. And his obedience, his going through what he went through, assured him eternal life. Now, many people who may not understand a lot of things that the people of God talk, they may not understand their responses. But as we continue, they will begin to see that there's something different about this God that they serve. There's something different about these people because they're not shaken. You know, they have a power and a faith and a peace that I can't find. That's what they'll say. What is it? That's being that light. That's being that light. A light shines gets rid of the darkness so people will start coming to the light and they will be inquiring about the light but we have to be strong in as the light so as I continue to read it says uh, God is in the midst of her she shall not be moved God shall help her just at the brink of dawn the nations raged the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with me. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who's made desolate in the earth. He makes wars to cease. I had some things that the Lord had shared with me about war ceasing. Uh, it, it goes on further to talk about how the instruments of war, he, just, he, breaks, he breaks the bow. He shatters the spear. He makes their uh, weapons of warfare simply unusable. He talked about the chariots that were burned in battle, and they did those things. They would burn the chariots because they needed the chariot. They needed the chariots to come against the people. So he burns the chariots. Now think about it in the natural, but think about it in the spiritual, what he's doing. Our goal is to stay in the Lord, keep our peace, shine as a light, speak what we need to speak, be in the places that we need to be. If you're not finding that peace, you need to be still, those who call them, you know, who are Christians, and know that he is God. God will help, quite, God will help you by, by your uh, reading the word and believing the word. That's the other thing the Lord said. And Vicki hit on it when she, and when she said um, people uh, say these things. They can quote these things, but are they really believing those things? Taking something and causing it to be a belief is a process. Because if you believe something to where you are going to act upon it, then things are going to start to leave you. All those unbeliefs that you had that were um, warring against your belief, against you trying to believe, let me put it like that, they will begin to be of non-effect. Those are things that are warring against you. People are in warfare in their minds right now. 
And I'm talking about people on all levels, those that don't know the Lord and those that do know the Lord. But there are many who have found their peace and peace and they're standing in their peace and they're a light and they're helping others whose light is not quite as bright. That's why we have to continue to, to uh, uh, meet together. We can't uh, forsake this. We can't forsake communication. We can't forsake coming and laying hands on the sick. We can't forsake those things. We are covered. So people of God, those who have called upon his name, those who have given their life to the Lord, listen, because you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And God is saying that when you, when you seek after the Lord, and that's, that's what we need to do, one of the scriptures that Vicky, uh, Elder Vicki had um, said was about uh, panting after him. And God says, um, if you seek me, you're going to find me. And I always see that scripture as if, if you really have a desire to know him, he's going to make sure you're going to see him. He's going to get in your way. He's going to make sure that, you know, that you find him. That's his promise. If you seek me. So what I'm saying, seek him in this time. Be that light. Get brighter. So when you find him, then be still and allow him to be God. Hear him. Hear him. Remember Jesus, which is the embodiment of, of God, came upon the earth, walked upon this earth, demonstrated how to be a son of God, went to the cross, purchased us. He did all of that as part of the Godhead. Now, when we find God, we don't need to be t telling God everything. We need to be still and watch him work. Be still and allow him to be God in our life. Because too many times we're too busy telling God what we, we need for him to do and how we need for him to be. Now, there's a time when we talk to God. I'm not talking about that. But we're, in, we're at a time in this place uh, we're at a place where we've never been before. We've read about it, and we've been through little trial runs. Some of us passed the test. Some of us didn't have to go back through the trial run. A time or two, DeAndre says. But it's God's will. Because at some point in time, he knew it. People didn't know. We don't know. And I'm not, I'm not even saying that this is whatever. But as I look at things, it sure is pointing. I mean, we know for certainty that the day is approaching. I know that. We've known that. And now we're seeing the signs. We're seeing things that is confirming and is causing us to rise up. We're seeing the panic of a lost people. We're seeing those things. And in the midst of all of that, we're, we have peace. Look at that contrast. Doesn't that enlighten God in our, our lives? Doesn't it cause us to be quiet and listen and see what else he has for us so that we can remain in him through this? The word of God says those who endure to the end will be saved. So we have to endure it to the end. There's no throwing in the towel. There's none of this. I can't take it anymore. God, that, is, that, that word uh, or that attitude or that mindset is, has to be removed. And I know we're in process. But I know it's possible and I know God's the one that's causing us to be that. We, we, we don't stop because we feel like it's enough. We, uh, God is taking us to new, taking all of the body of Christ into new uh, layers, new dimensions of him. And we here at FOM, that's one place and all the other places. We're not, we're not, uh, God's just not here. Hallelujah. But you have to be faithful to the place God's put you. But we speak to, we're speaking. The word is going out wherever it's going. It's for everyone who has an ear to hear. So I just thank God for what he's doing. I did not know how the message would come together.
but I do know that it did. I do know that every little thing that the Lord has uh, done, the little shifts, the little drops of the word, uh, um, just the uh, uh, talking to certain people, everything, God has a purpose for it. It's a divine purpose. So, Father, we will be still, and we will know that you are God. We will watch you, we will meditate upon you, and we will hear you, and we will obey you. We will walk it out. We will do the things that you're asking us to do. So I just thank you, Father. I just thank you for what you're doing, Father. I ask, Father, that you allow every word, Father, that's come out of this pulpit today to go into the hearts of the people. And if there's anything, Lord God, that you desire not to go, Father, you are God, and I trust you, God, because you know, Father, we come from a place of humility, Lord God. We come from a place of a submission, Lord God, that we don't want to do anything. We don't want to release anything that would be a detriment to, to those, Lord God. So we just yield this message to you, Lord God. We've allowed you to speak through us, Lord God, and we're grateful for it. So at this time, we're just going to ask if anybody has any uh, prayer needs, that we're just going to lift them up right now. We're going to pray with you from here in Troy, Missouri. But we're actually at the throne of God. Hallelujah. 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 So we, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to speak to our hearts, Lord God, the hearts of your people, Lord God. Strengthen them, Lord God. Bind up and cast away any fear that's trying to overtake them. Father, let them know who you are. Let them feel the power of Holy Spirit overtaking them, Lord God. Let this word that challenged them not only have challenged them, but shifted them, Lord God, into an action, a new action, a new faith, Lord God. Hallelujah. I thank you, God, because if you're faithful to me and I know that I'm no different if, uh, than anyone else. You, I've seen mm, mm, even in my own life uh, my faith shifted, Lord God, a realignment with that plumb line, hallelujah, and I'm, I'm grateful, Father. And so, Father, I know if you did it for me, if you're doing it uh, uh, in the midst of, of, of FOM, Father, you're doing it everywhere, Father. Those uh, that are calling upon your name, hallelujah, I thank you, God, that you're doing that so they will walk out and be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, Lord God, in, in, in these troubling times, Father. And even right now, Father, if there's any one, Father, that uh, doesn't know you, Father, we just ask, Father, right now, Father, that you just uh, begin to work in their lives, Lord God, that that today, Lord God, they will give their life to you, the one sovereign God, hallelujah, and know that Jesus uh, came to receive the fullness of Jesus by giving their life to you, Lord God, that that they will walk from this day forward, Lord God, that they recognize, Father, that without you, Father, that there is no hope, Father, and because Jesus is the door to this, Lord God, we call upon your name, Jesus. So, Father, I just thank you, God, hallelujah, that you send someone around, Father, to those people, Father, who have given their life to the Lord, uh, Father, today, Father, that they will begin to be... Um, discipled and encouraged along their way hallelujah hallelujah we just bless you today in jesus name amen